introduce you to the Gem Scroll and Pansy Cutter Set. It's a four piece set, probably one of the most misunderstood, underused, but still the most fabulous set that Gem makes. I'm a big fan of this one. A um, couple tools you're gonna need that are a must have to get this successful. So let me walk you through those and we'll get started. So beyond the four pieces of the gem cutter set itself, you're also going to need the roller pad. This is an indispensable tool that you're going to need with actually all of the gem cutters. And they have different size holes. Some of the gem cutters are going to have two pieces and it braces it perfectly. And we're going to walk through how these fit in here as we go. Other indispensable tool is the scriber needle. This comes with a cap. Don't lose it. It's a very sharp fine tipped piece, very easy to handle for the small details that you need to get out of the mold. So what I'm working with is satinized gum paste. There's actually three pieces of, or three styles of gum paste, I should say, that work well in this. Some don't. So if you're using like the fondant plus tylose kind of gum paste recipe and it's not working for you, that's why it's a little bit too soft. So just from my experience, there's three that work in here. It's the PME sugar paste, ready-made, the satinized gum paste, and I add a little bit more Tylose powder to that and it works nicely. And then also the Carrie Biggers gum paste recipe, and that's on our website. She was kind enough to let us post that there. It's a homemade recipe. You do need to make it the night before, but it's a really nice flexible gum paste that allows you time to work but then still sets firm. That also really works well in your cutter if you're a Cricut cutter fan. So let's get started. I've got some colored black and let me show you how to get these in the mold. So I'm going to start with the most complicated one first. Complicated I think in, in some people's minds just because it's thin and delicate and it's hard to work with sometimes. So I'm just going to set this, see how it has the little handle almost on the back. I'm going to set this down into the mold and just make sure it's good and firm. Now it's funny, um, we think of these cutters a little bit differently. As Americans, we tend to force the cutter onto the piece of gum paste. Really, this goes the opposite way. This is there to accept the gum paste. And when we push it in there, like I'm going to show you how, it really accepts the impression a lot better and the cut comes out a lot cleaner. So here I've got, I've been working on my mini mat. I've got a little bit of the satinized gum paste that, with Tylos powder that I colored black. And I've rolled it out really nice and thin, probably an eighth of an inch or even thinner. I'm just going to give it one more roll to make sure it's nice and thin thin. All right, here's my trick. You ready? A little spritz of canola or vegetable spray. And I'm not going to do it over my work surface because I don't want this tacky. I'll do it over here. A little spritz and then I'm going to just rub that on. And I'm not going to spray it into the mold because I don't want it getting like gunky and chalked up. But what I'm going to do is just lay it over the mold. Give a little press with my fingertips to get it to stay in place. And then I'm going to roll over it with my poly pin my small pin here. And what that's gonna do is kind of push it down into the mold while cutting the edges. So I've got it down in there nicely. Now I'm gonna go over it more firmly with the rolling pin and you can see where the edges are starting to cut through. You can almost just rub it over the edge. And you wanna make sure that it gets all down in there, all the detail gets down and nice. Nice clean cut. And then you should be able to it off very gently. Now this cutter, it really cuts it into two pieces. So you can see where the separation is here. So you've actually got two of those scrolls, not just one. I'm going to take my scriber needle out and let me, I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these out for you because I want to show you how easily they come out. But ideally, because this is still kind of a soft gum paste, I want to let this sit in here for maybe up to 15 minutes just to kind of start taking the shape. Look how, see, I'm just going to use my scriber needle. See where this piece is here? I'm going to pull out it a little bit and help it out of that mold. Don't pull too too firmly because it can distort it. So I'm going to lay this down and you can see how it's still soft. I can shape it a little bit. You can curl it a little bit more if you want to or open it up. But you can lay, lay that flat if you like to or you can go ahead and apply it to your cake. Um, this is a, a pretty dry gum paste that I started with so it's holding its shape really nicely. But if you're working with a softer gum paste, it can stretch out of shape. So just be careful of that. If that's the case and you find it is stretching as you're pulling it out, just let it sit in there for like 15 minutes. Then you'll be able to have success with your pulling out with your scribe on the ear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pick this up. You could also paint this gold. It would look great. Just paint it on your board separately. I've got my gum glue. We've got a video on how to make that if you're unfamiliar with that. I'm going to flip it over to the back sides up and just really gently with my gum glue touch the back. You don't want this sloppy because you don't want it sliding off. This is just going to help it adhere to the cake. 
And then just however you see your design, if you want to do it in a band across the center, that's great. But then you just apply that to the cake. I'm going to go ahead and pull my second piece out here and show you how these work together. If you'd like to, some of these uh, pieces, we'll get in here close again. I'm going to use my uh, craft knife here. Some of these pieces, you don't have to use all these if you don't want to. So maybe I want to like embellish my first scroll a little bit. I can cut this right here and just use this piece. I'll attach again with a little bit of gum glue. Not too much, just a couple of dots. And so when I say embellish, so the scroll, it's, this is how it comes out of the mold, but if I want it to go a little bit further and maybe embellish up this way as well, then I can just cut up a piece off of another scroll and then add that on. And then you could certainly do the same thing with this piece as well. And you're just, you're, you're making a really intricate design. So I'm going to walk you through all these, these other three pieces in the mold, in the mold set, the, the cutter set work just as the same way as far as turning the cutter upside in the roller pad and then um, pulling them out with a scriber needle. They all work the same way. So I'm just going to go ahead and walk through those and then we'll show you a finished product of all the four pieces at the end of the video. Here's the second piece out of the gem scroll and pansy set. This is actually the pansy face that I'm working on here. So I've got my gum paste rolled out already. And again, I'm going to give a little spritz over here. Rub that on, lay it over. I'll press with my fingertips and cutting with the roller. Again, just making sure I get all of that detail in there. Making sure it's going to cut nice and clean. And then you can pull this off. You just position these however you want to. Take your scriber needle and move that around and position it a little bit better how you want it as well. If you're going to need this residue on the back here, you can just brush that off with a clean brush and alcohol. All right, let's move on to another piece. Okay, I'm going to work with the third piece out of this set now. Got a little bit more gum paste rolled out. Again, using my rolling pad, we'll use this piece now. Uh, kind of a Fleur de Lis looking thing. But again, my little tip of a little canola spray once you've rolled that out. Not, not too heavy, just a light spritz. I'm going to put that on there, lay it over. Just press a little bit with my hand and then go back with the rolling pin. You want to make sure that's really nice and in there so it takes that has such nice detail in it, the embossment in the center. You want to make sure that gets all that detail down in there. So again, just kind of rolling down and I'm going to take my finger and just make sure all those little points are cut nice and clean so it looks nice and comes off easily. All right, I should be able to peel this off pretty easily. There we go. And then, with, again, with my scriber needle, you can pull this out if you need to or just leave it in there. This one, I think, is going to come out pretty easily. 
if you have points, like if I kept pulling this way, this might tear off. So some of the smaller pieces, you'll go ahead and pull those out with your scriber needle as well. Again, being careful as you're pulling it out not to stretch it out of shape. And again, you can just lay this down. You can shape it differently if you want. I think it's pretty like that. Some people don't like this little addition over here. So again, you can take your craft knife and just kind of make it how you want it. I'm gonna cut that off. You could even put this somewhere else, you know, down here or on one of your other pieces. That'd be fine. So I'll glue this back together the way it was in the mold so you can see how it looks when it's finished. But again, just a, whoops, a little bit too much. Very thin dot of gum glue on the back there to adhere it to the cake because you don't want it sliding around. All right. And then I'm going to put this piece back on that I cut off. You can see where I cut it off right there. Just so you can see what it looks like as a finished product. Make these cutters your own. You can use them in combination with other cutters as well. There we go. And now we'll move on to the fourth piece. I think I have enough gum paste rolled out on this last piece that I can make that work. This is like a two-sided daisy medallion almost. So again, this has a little, just a little spritz of vegetable spray, canola spray on there. I'll push this down in there so it holds and then roll over it with my rolling pin both ways all around. And then I'm going to take my fingers and make sure you can also use a ball tool to really get down into those crevices and make sure that it's going to cut nicely for you. But I think the tools that I have here with me are sometimes the best ones to feel if it's cut through or not. All right, it feels pretty good. Now, if you pull this off and you see how, see how this is around the edge that it's not a very clean cut, just again, just take your finger and you can just kind of rub that off and make sure it looks nice and clean before you pull it out. It's worth the extra five seconds it's gonna take you to do that. Then again, I'm gonna take my scriber needle and just pull at the edge pull it any of the edges until it starts to give. Again, I'm just kind of helping it out. I'm not stretching it out so it's not coming out of shape. And that's the detail on that one. So flip it over, a little gum paste glue on the back to adhere it. We'll put it up here, there's enough room. And there you go. So that's all four pieces of the Gem Scroll and Pansy Cutter Set. Again, it's a little bit misunderstood, but I think you can do some really fabulous things with it. I really love these pieces, especially that scroll work. It's just, just really gorgeous. You use these in combination with other pieces in the set or even some from other sets as well. You're gonna come up with a really pretty combination. It's gonna look just really, really clean cut. And I think you'll really enjoy using these gem sets once you get into them. Thanks for watching.